Anyone who's seeking to persuade, negotiate, or sell is wise to learn the art of the soundbite. Good soundbites are brief, pithy statements that sum up what you're trying to say, short, sweet, and to the point. Remember John F. Kennedy, ask not what your country can do for you, but rather what you can do for your country. Or less famously, Harry Truman, do what you think is right and let them all go to hell. Good sound bites give the listener an image to hang on to as the speaker makes his or her argument. And for that reason, those who are in positions of authority would be wise to use sound bites. There are three critical elements that good sound bites possess. Analogy. The best sound bites use analogies to make a comparison between unlike situations. For example, former Secretary of the Treasury, Timothy Geithner, likened the 2008 financial crisis as the equivalent of piloting a plane on fire. It's a powerful simile. Metaphors are also powerful. Brevity. Never overdo the analogy. Keep it short. Otherwise, it loses its power. As James Lowther of Britain's House of Parliament once advised new members, stand up, speak up, shut up. Polish. You don't get good at playing the piano without practicing every day. Those who use sound bites spend time creating them, but they also use them in their everyday communications. Practice does make perfect. Proficient users of sound bites are attuned to their usage. This comes from being well read. Keep up with the issues, but also read for pleasure. Look for quotations from great speakers. It's a fine way to look at how masters of speech honed their commentary into statements that have become part of our public consciousness. The purpose of sound bites is simple. Help people remember what you said and why you said it. When you're concise and colorful, it reflects your personality and people remember your message.